Well, they made me start in the back. This was my first race. And I blasted through everybody in two or three to four laps, whatever. This was in the Roadrunner? In the Roadrunner. My mom was sitting right there. Her and Dallas and all of them were sitting right there. And uh, I just drove away. I, I had well, well over a half a lap lead on second place. I get the white flag. It used to be a big pole right there with the tire. I get the white flag. And it had more bank at the time than it does now, and it was longer, it was faster. And I come off of turn two, and the right front ball joint broke. And that car rolled, flipped over in two or three times, rolled twice, landed over there, going to where turn three is now, still kind of, still had a little straightaway left on its roof. And I'm sitting there upside down. I had never, ever been in an aircraft type seat belt, and that's what we used back in the mid 70s. And uh, I'm hanging upside down and the battery exploded and there's acid dropping on my face. It's burning like hell. I'm like, man, I was so pissed because I could have shut the damn thing off over there and coasted around and won the race, but I didn't know the ball joint was gonna break. It just broke. It was probably cracked when we started. Something we missed. And um, I finally got the seat belt up, fell face first on the roof, crawled out. I was wearing cowboy boots. Probably not that nice. No. <laughs> they were rough out. And I kicked the side of the car and broke my big toe. It's my biggest injury. Broke toe and a lot of embarrassment. My mom thought I was dead. She was like, oh my God, this is gonna be something. Crazy son of a bitch racing, but anyway. We uh, thought it was junk, parked her for a few weeks, went out there and cranked it up. It smoked and farted and took off. Like, wow, this thing ain't hurt that bad. The body just beat all the hell. And so we took it, two four-wheel drive trucks, tied it to a tree with a logging chain, and stretched the car, pulled it off, back out. Rudy and I started tricking the front end all up. We threw camber and built caster in the car. Did a lot of stuff that the factory specs wouldn't allow you to, to get that far with. Came back, won like six in a row, won the championship after missing a few races, but uh, a lot of fun. That's where it all began. A lot of memories. It's still here, same grandstands. I think that was in 1975, I'm not sure. I think so, give or take. I see the water truck over there. I just saw it too. Right? We didn't have near that nice a water truck. <laughs> but we would come down here on Wednesday or Thursday and start working on the track. One of us would be pulling stuff around, dragging, trying to let it out. One of us would be on the motor grader, trying to make it smooth as we could. Another guy would be in the water truck. And we'd start working the dirt in. And then... Uh, come back Friday and, and rework it and get a bunch of water, get a bunch of moisture in the track and uh, come back and race on Saturday. The hell of a track. It looks it looks even better now. I mean, it, the guy, whoever's taking care of it now is doing a hell of a good job. I'd love to come back here and race on this track one time for it. <laughs> I hold the all-time track record on this track because it was the all-time record before they shortened the track. So it can never be broke. In a hobby style. Faster than the Supers. How long did you race in cowboy boots? Quite a while. Probably first, first two or three years, I think I bought a pair of racing shoes when I started racing asphalt. I don't know, probably one of those dirt modifieds or anything, it, it wouldn't matter. Or super, you know, super, I think they still have super stocks. Those, those, uh, 
those skinny tired modifieds with the big motors would be fun because they you know they, just, they don't have any traction because the tires are small so they're just fun man you can pitch them sideways halfway down straight away slide around there if you could pick one person to race against here who would it be whoever their best guy is i don't know who the best guy is anymore <laughs> probably get my butt kicked but <laughs> it sure be fun to come and try it no one could kick my butt in the 70s here I guess that's why I got lucky and became a NASCAR driver <laughs> it was fast it was hauling ass at the end of straightaways you had long straightaways what kind of lap times did y'all run? 21. First time I broke the record, it was like a 21 second lap, 2140 or something. I can't believe I remember that. And then uh, it got down in the high 19s, I think. When we, when we rebroke it a couple times, I imagine they get around here a lot faster than that now because it's shorter. And the tires are going to be a lot better now than they were. It's just awesome to see it still here, still racing. So many businesses are shut down. So many things are so depleted around here that it just kind of breaks your soul a little bit. I always pictured myself coming back here to live sometime late in life. If I came here now, I'd probably start racing again. That'd be stupid. <laughs> but how cool are these grandstands? I mean, they're just exactly like they were then. They are pretty nice grandstands. They're really nice. I think that I think it I think it would hold about a thousand people. Were they booing you or cheering you? Hell, all the above. It was great to be hated, I can tell you that. Everybody that sat in the grandstands was people's, you know, wives and children and mothers and fathers and their siblings and their friends that they worked with or whatever. And whenever you beat them, they all wanted to boo you. And then all your friends and all your fans was yaying you. And you know, a lot of people, they want to see a, a local town hero, you know, and then I, I went asphalt racing for a couple of years, and <laughs> I came back with a, with our asphalt car that we bought from, from it was Darryl, one of Daryl Gardner's old cars. Jim Nagel built it, and uh, it was a Chevelle, and it was it was a really good car. We uh, we built a new asphalt car and decided to take the old car and come back to Susanville and just try to mop up some of the big money races that they had and fair races and stuff. I think the fair's getting ready to go on now. It's, Fair races are the best. That's where the biggest purses are and stuff. And they, they made me start over there on the back stretch. And I was so damn mad. I don't think it took me but two or three, four laps to catch the pack, blow through the pack, and we then we stumped the show up. We made it ugly. We we whipped up on them pretty bad with that car. It was it was a it was a better car than than most of them here, so but uh, it was an asphalt car, and we switched it over to dirt. And uh, man, it was it was fun to drive here, really fun. It had a good, had a mean motor in it too, a lot meaner than the motor that was in the road runner. No idea. Yeah, but I was racing asphalt pretty much full time. Probably 79 or 80 maybe. I don't I don't remember when the last time I raced here. I don't know. Pretty cool place. Let's go. <laughs>